Hey everybody, welcome back to Limited Edge Machine Works. Sorry it's been a second since I've had a chance to get a video out. That's not my typical plan. The Miata project hasn't gone as smooth or as quickly as we thought, and there, we took a lot of footage of what we were doing out there, but it was just us figuring out how not to paint a car. Uh, but we finally got it heading our way. There'll be more updates on that later. I wanted to thank all of the subscribers. Right now we're over 3,000. Uh, really appreciate you guys. And we're working on some gearing today. We're back cutting some gearing out in the shop. I want to show you how that's done. Just get a quick video out. Let me show you what we got going on over here and what back cutting is and why we do it. Hopefully you can see on this gear here, this surface. Well, I guess first we should explain. <clears throat> the problem is these transmissions like to bounce out of gear. It comes out of basically any kind of four-wheeler, ATV, street bike, Anything that you're hard on, it's gonna get if you're if you're hard on shifting it or shifting it without a clutch at the wrong time, it can get to where they like to bounce out of gear. You'll put it in second gear or third gear typically where you've got a lot of torque and a lot of leverage on it, and you'll throttle up and it'll bounce back to neutral and neutralize, even though there's not really a neutral there. You can tear stuff up too. They can bounce into two gears at once or whatever. You don't want to do that, you'll split the case. But that surface is the pull side. Everything on a transmission gear. As far as this has a pull and a coast side, this is the surface that's transmitting the power. And as you can see, it's worn out. This is a prime example of one that would slam out of gear. And I'll set this up on a little tripod here and try to get you a shot of, you know, what would be going on. You'd have another one here. This one's equally as worn on that surface where it's trying to transmit power. And those two worn out surfaces come together and instead of forming a contact surface that is you know, on the same axis as the rotation, since they're worn, they like to bounce out. They just boing, bounce off of each other and there's nothing to hold the torque. Now on the coast side, which you don't transmit power through, they're still nice and strong. That joint's not going to give up. It's not going to even want to come apart. You go back to the pull side where all the wear is. And it's just squishy and there's not a whole lot there to hold you anymore. So what we do is, if you can see in the mill, that head is trimmed, well, it's set at three degrees back that way. I've taken the first cut here on this gear. You can see it's got a fresh surface. You can see where uh, three degrees. Anyway, enough talking about it. Let's let's just cut one. Like I said, I've already taken the first cut, so now that it's all set up and the hard part's out of the way, I'll just show you what the actual metal removal entails. Before we do that, motor before we fire a motor up, I'll go ahead and index the next one. This uh, worm gear's 90 to 1, so we'll just need 30 even spins. Got a nice zero set on the top there. Take the lock off, and we'll just count this out. those come back around set your lock again now you can turn the motor on Index your next cut. And there it is. Fire it back up.
When you're running these power feeds, don't just slam them side to side. The old boss man brought that up at work the other day. He brought up a good point there. Especially at a high rate of travel, you'll shear the little plastic gears off inside. And I'm sorry for the noise and the... You know, a little bit of lazy machine work there, but... That's it, that gear is now back cut on the pull side. And uh, I gotta pull it off, I got a whole transmission to do here. There's 30 cuts. Some of these are double sided. Here's the rest of it all laid out. But I wanted to stop and cut this in and make sure that it was crystal clear why we're back cutting the gears versus just cutting them back to uh, straight perpendicular with the gear face. Uh, you know, a 90 degree face is fine. That's what they come with from the factory. In fact, they're not even a machine finished surface from the factory. They're just a rough forged surface. But we don't want to do that because the bikes that these are going back in are race bikes. They're double the ordinary horsepower that they would see. And they just will not stand up to a traditional 90 degree face meeting another 90 degree face. They're going to start to pop out even if they're new gearing uh, pretty quickly. They wear out pretty fast. So we put that back cut on the face so that they do the exact opposite of what they do when they're worn out. With the back cut on each face at that angle, we uh, actually see that the gears want to suck together instead of repel against each other. Uh, so it's hard to explain why, but because you got two slanted surfaces trying to push against each other, they actually transmit force, I guess longitudinally along the axis that they're rotating on. Hope that makes sense to everybody. Uh, I'll cut back to the video now so I can get on with trying to cut these for you. But and I also wanted to show a little support for a guy named Kenzie Fab. He's got another YouTube channel. I've been watching a lot of his videos. He's tearing down Haas machines and fixing problems on them and showing people how to update them, add pendants, add memory, all kinds of things. Tear down the spindles, gearbox issues with them, just all kinds of teardowns. So if you're running a Haas machine or if you just like this kind of stuff and you want to see a little more CNC side of things, check out Kenzie Fab. He's got a really nice YouTube channel up and uh, see what he's been up to too. Back at it. Here's one more shot a little more aggressively. That's only half of it. Anyway, that's what keeps me busy. So, if you guys have transmission that's jumping out of gear or whatever and need need your uh, gearing back cut, give me a shout. And again, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. I'd appreciate it. Like, share, comment, all that good stuff. This is a real short video. I don't think it's going to take much editing. But uh, what I'm after is watch time right now. So maybe you guys can just fire up some videos and let them play in the background while you're doing something else. That would really help me out. I'm trying to get this channel off the ground so it can actually generate some revenue while I do some machine work and show everybody how we do what we do out here. So It's been a heck of a journey getting here. Uh, but appreciate you guys coming along with me. And whatever it is that you're working on out there, we really hope it's going well. Throw some sparks, you know, make some chips, take some metal off, put it back on if you screw it up, take it off again the right way. See you next time.